So our text on this series is from Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32. So do remember this. I'm going to probably repeat it every week. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, which simply means those who ignore the God's principles and God's way of doing things, he flatter or he corrupt by flattery, which simply means the Antichrist will kind of sweep them aside with flattery by rewarding them. But, this is our main core thing, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits, this translation says. The next translation, which is uh, uh, amplified, I like what he said here. He says, they shall start, prove themselves strong and stand firm and do exploits, but it went further to say specifically for God. Okay, now I know if you say for God straight away, some people might say it has nothing to do with people. No, <laughs> everything you do for God is actually for people. Apart from your personal time of worship, everything you do for God is for the benefit of others. Amen. As long as we are here on earth. Maybe in heaven, then your worship will not just be you and God. Um, on that note, the Hebrew word used here for do exploit, another translation actually say resist him. Another translation says itself do exploit says and resist him. But the one thing I want to point out here, which in the Hebrew translation of that exact word was used there is, that's how, simply means to do. So the focus is not even just the exploit part, but to do something, to make something happen or to do something. This is important, to, in, especially in the light of the message we're talking about today, especially as we're talking about influencers, all right? The focus there is that those people who know their God will prove themselves strong and do something in a, another way of looking at it. And they did something, and whatever they did is now an exploit for God or for God's kingdom, okay? So dictionary meaning for exploit is a striking or notable deed. Take note of the word deed and take note of the word spirited or heroic acts. So I'm highlighting acts and I'm highlighting deeds. But it went further to say, if you refer to some, someone's exploit, you mean the, the brave or interesting things they have done, which is interesting. So note this, influencers are active people, very important. Influencers are active people. It's hard, and I'm going to probably come back to this statement I'm making now so many times today. It is hard to see anyone who has genuinely influenced something for good that has been a dormant person. Dormant simply means even though this thing can become active, decides not to do anything. There's a bit of a choice, a bit of a decision, a bit of a, of a, a philosophy that leads to people being dormant rather than proactive or active. Okay, let me give you an example of what I've just explained there. A good example of active influencer is moms. Moms. If a mo woman gives birth to a child, uh, parents basically, but I'll stick to mom for now. Imagine giving birth to that long, wonderful baby and then just put him on the pram or her on the pram and do nothing. What kind of child would that be? <laughs> so can I say dead? <laughs> dead child. But just, just use that to think. One, okay, even if you, that mom becomes a little bit active, but not very proactively doing something for the benefit of that child, to become great in life or to become whatever God has called them to be, that child may not, may not is a word because God is merciful. Okay, God has another way of always helping us. Even when our parents were not good enough in raising us, 
our God is our parent, okay? But amazingly, it's amazing how much influence parents have on children. It's amazing how much power God has given a mom to just raise someone in an image, in the image of God. Or even just to be whoever that child, the mom believes that child is supposed to be. Amen. Oh, friends, the point here is influencers are active people. What exploit are we doing for the Lord? That's the key question here. Who or what are we influencing? So I use the who and what there because we don't just influence people, we influence situations. You can take on a job just to bring an influence in that job. You can take on a position and you can demand, you know what, I want to be the boss of this company, not just so I can earn more money, but because I can bring about a good change in that place. God uses people to influence situation. And I believe that's what God is calling us into this year. Every single person here, it will be at different levels, but not dormant Christians, active ones. Actively influencing situations, actively influencing people. Remember Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, what did it say? If you remember 24 and 25, it says, do not forsake the garden of yourselves together, but what you should do, you should actually think about ways how you could motivate one another to acts of love and good work. Ways of influencing and energizing others and making them turn this way instead of that way. And all of those things, we're doing it for who? For God, for God. Now, I want to now highlight some of the things that the Holy Spirit started talking about last week that he said, bring that back again. We cannot make this kind of, be true influencers, and that's why I added the word true there. It's not just influencer, because there's so many influencers on social media. But I say that to say, the Holy Spirit brought, brought this back to me and said, we cannot try to be influencers in the same way the world is doing it. Okay? We cannot make the same kind of true impact in, our, in this world or in our families trying to do it the same way the world is doing it. Let me show you something. Note this. God has called us to be different from the world. They should be what? A distinction between a believer and what? An unbeliever. Uh, that's not my view, by the way. It's not my opinion. The Antichrist wants to blend all of us in. The spirit of Antichrist is already permeated the church and trying to let the church think that it's okay to be loved by the world. If the, the world does not love you, what you're doing, then what you're doing is wrong. No, Jesus told us, no, they will hate you because you're mine. I'll show you. Okay, let's look at scripture. Paul started by saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, he says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can, a righteous, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? And how can light live in darkness uh, live with darkness, sorry, and what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are, who are we? In other words, the Spirit of God lives in you. God said, I will live in them and I will walk amongst them, which simply means if you think about that literally, God is walking around when you are walking around. So you are his hands and his feet. Where you go, God goes. So from that angle, Paul is now saying, I will be their God and they will be my people. And he says on, therefore, based on all of that Paul has said, therefore, come out from among them. Separate yourself from unbelievers. 
and I will explain this further, separate yourself from them and says the Lord, don't touch the filthy things, um, they are filthy things, and I will welcome you. And I will be your father, and you, uh, you will be my sons and daughters, says uh, the Lord. Question, when God says, come out from amongst them, does he, is he saying, don't go to work? Does he, is he saying you cannot run a company with unbelievers as employees and things like that? It's not doesn't mean that. Because some people could read that and say, you know what? When I start my company, I only hire believers. If that's what the Holy Spirit asks you to do, do it. But it doesn't have to be that, that, like that. Okay? That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is that you are not to be like them. They should be able to see you and see there's something different about her, something different about him. So that they have something to wish to be like or want to be like or even hate. And them hating you is nothing wrong with that. Amen. <laughs> I know you don't want to say amen to that one. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them hating you if what, how you're living your life is pleasing the Lord. Okay? Uh, there's a movie I love. We all watched it. How, how many of us has watched Coming to America? There's this part where this weird pastor says, loving the Lord is wrong. And I don't want to be right. That's my tagline, my, thick, my WhatsApp. If the loving the Lord is wrong, <laughs> then I want to be on the wrong. Right. <laughs> now, that's where I want to be. <laughs> Watch what Jesus said. Jesus said, I have given them your word, and the world, read with me that line, please, and the world hates them because they do not belong to, stop. Who said this? And Jesus was talking to the Father. That's a prayer he was praying. This is not a teaching. No, it's a declaration of reality. God the Father and God the Son having a conversation and God the Son is telling the Father, they, the world will hate these people. Why? Because they don't belong here. So why are we trying to be like them? Amen. Oh, I wish I have more, many more young people to see. This, this is the kind of message for young people. Because the lure to be like the world is so strong. I'm not asking you to take them out. You see what I'm saying? So don't go and quit your job and say, Pastor King said, um, come out from amongst them and be separate. Or quit school and say, my teacher is not, my teacher is maybe whatever queer community, so I'm not going to school. No, 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 don't do that. That's not what he's talking about. Okay? He's saying, you don't have to be like them. And I feel the Holy Spirit wanted to repeat this. Maybe not for all of us in this room because we are wonderful people, but there are people who are watching this. And there are people who will watch this 100 years from now. Amen. And the word of God is true. It will stay alive. 100 years from now, this same word will be piercing the heart of people and delivering them from wrong choices. Amen. And if the layout to be like the world is strong now, what would you think he'll be many more years from now if the Lord tarries? They do not belong to this world. Okay, so moving on. So please, this is my plea now. I beg of you, as pastor of Favor House Church, <laughs> whatever you can do, ask God to help you to spot areas where you're blending in with the world, where you're not standing out. Amen. God will help you with this. But be, why is this important? Because your standing out is important to influence. Okay? Blending in will not bring about influence. Because we're a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Have you ever tried to light a match in a complete dark room? Anyone? You know how much that tiny matches? How much influence that tiny matches? 
brings into a dark hall. Big hall, church hall, dark, just tiny much, boom. It's hard to hide it. Amen. And that's what you are, the light of the world. You cannot be hidden. So stop hiding. Amen. Okay, moving on. So Jesus, Paul John said it this way. This is good. He says, do not love the world, this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Okay, are we, are we following together, everyone? Good. <laughs> for the world offers only a craving for physical what? Pleasure. And also craving for everything that our eyes can see. And another thing the world can offer you is pride in, in your achievement or possession. Hallelujah. Oh. Pride in, look at how much I've achieved. Pride in, gosh, I worked for this. I deserve that. Pride in, listen, do you know who I am? Pride, full stop. And that's exactly what the world is promoting. It's called the pride movement. And we are called for the opposite. The humble movement. It doesn't mean you haven't... You, you don't deserve things. It simply means everything you are, you say, from, from you are all things, Lord, and to you are all things. Even the more you do, the more you give him glory for it. The more active you are, the more you say, it's not me, but the Lord. Praise God. And he says that those things are not from the Father. John went further, he says, and the world is fading away Along with everything that people crave for, those things that we are craving for, but anyone who does what pleases the Father will live forever, which means as a reward. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard, it is connecting it. That's why I said this was supposed to be last week. The Holy Spirit brought it into this week. He says, last, remember, you heard the Antichrist is coming. It's not coming. He's already, many of them have already shown up. He's trying to say, of course, even though the real one is still not there yet, many of them are still coming. Well, that's what John is saying. Yeah? So, and he then goes further. He says, how do we know that? It's because some of them have entered the church. They're no longer part of the church. It's not because they left the local church. Some of them are still in the church, but no longer, I said it last week, are no longer functioning in the way God wants, but actually trying to bring a different teaching completely. Remember that. Good. All right, so, and so, but you are not like that. That's good news. And I'm speaking to all of you in this room, you're not like that. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be separate, to be different for the Lord. Praise God. Let's go to, now let's go to the point. The attribute of true influencer is a true influencer go deeper. That's where the title came from, the subtitle came from, going deeper. Now, I need to explain this. Uh, an influencer, go deeper. Even when you think about bad influencers, they go deeper as well. <laughs> They take things further than others would do, would have. If everyone says, hey, it's okay, fine, here, let's just settle here, an influencer will step beyond that boundary and then bring everyone along. What I mean by going deeper is to go further, to do more, or to dig, dig these are synonyms. To go further, to ask more questions, to want to know more. This is in line with what God taught us in the beginning. Now, for our study on this, and then we will continue that next week, we will look at a gentleman called Moses. So for this one about going deeper, Moses is our example. 
But before we talk about Moses, I want to highlight the people who influenced Moses before Moses became a great leader and a great influencer. I'm going to, the scripture we're going to end on because of time, will highlight three women <laughs> that God used to influence Moses. But the interesting thing about these three women is that they all went further, deeper, dug deeper, did more than the average Jew. Okay? They went further, dug deeper than or did more than what was required. So what are we talking about here is if what is required is just clean this floor, an influencer will be the type of person that will say, what about the window? Are they not dirty? Do you understand what I'm saying so far, yeah? yeah. Okay, good. Now watch this story. We're going to end on this story. Okay, Exodus chapter 2. Now, the Bible says, about this time, from verse 1, the man, a man, and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. Now, we're going to stop and enjoy the story. About this time means what? Okay, so let me explain what is happening at that time. Pharaoh the king of Egypt, became disturbed about the Israelites. They have grown in number. The more they were punishing the children of Israel, after the death of Joseph, kings later came up, in, many pharaohs came up that forgot how amazing Joseph is, was for them, and what he did for the children, um, for Israel and Egyptians. And so then started persecuting the Jews. And so then the story, we come back to the story. About that time, a man and a woman got married. I love the fact that it's a man and a woman. That's the average Jew like you and me. There's nothing special about this woman, this man, or that woman. And there's nothing special about the boy. Many times we think there was. I will now tell you where there was the special came. This is just an average woman. But when that happened, they got married. Next line. The woman, so that's the first person that influenced Moses. The woman herself did what? Read with me. Became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Read further. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. This woman, in a time where it's no longer okay to keep a boy, the woman had a baby, she saw. Now, let's compare that with Mary. Mary, an angel appeared to Mary and told Mary, you will have a son. And this son will be special. And his name will be called Jesus. And he will be this, he will be that, and he will be that. So Mary knew clearly what kind of baby she was carrying. Let's talk about Samson. An angel appeared and so talked about Samson. You will have a child. He will be an, of Nazareth. He should not cut his hair. He should not be this. The same happened for John the Baptist. That is not the case here, friends. This woman decided, not my son. You're killing everyone, not mine. It wasn't her only child. She already had two children. But those ones have crossed the age for the killing spirit. spirit. <laughs> Gosh, my tongue nearly went off there. And so the woman herself, that's what I want you to get from this. The woman went further and she went deeper. Amen. When everyone else has settled for, oh, <laughs> It's my boy, but don't take him. Okay, no problem. She said, no, not my child. Because my son is special. 
Bible didn't bother to tell us who told her that your boy is special. You can actually decide, my child will be the president of whatever, and then you start working on that. Guess what? She didn't just see that. She did something. That's why I'm saying influencers are active people. Oh, you need to watch David Beckham's movie. If you watch it, I could have just played that here and then preached off the, the documentary of David Beckham. To be honest, the credit should just be Daddy Beckham, not David. It was his father who gave birth to a boy, and his dream was to play, the man's dream is to play Manchester. He decided, this boy, you must play for Manchester. And he worked on it, worked on it, worked on it, influenced him all kinds of ways. The mom was doing habits, mellowing things down. All of them together were working together, and they raised this boy who is influencing many, many more people today. I'm using real-life situation to explain this. That's what you have in this woman. We don't know her name. She saw something special, and she worked on it. Now, watch this. When it was no longer safe for her to carry on it, she came to the end of herself. Another person rose up. Okay? So she put the child in a basket, put it away, and then on the river, take note of the next person, the baby sister, another woman, went further. The instruction, the mom didn't say stay here and keep an eye on the basket and see. No, the mom has done all that she can and released the baby. But the young sister also thought that boy should not die. <laughs> that boy is also special. And then the young sister did what? Watched to see what will happen. No one sent her. She made a decision. This is talking about going deeper, going further. Do not just say, read your book because your mom said read. No, you do go further than that. Don't just move things because they say move it. No, you move that thing and then say, what else needs to be done? What else can I do? What else can I help? How else can I change things? That's what we're talking about, friends. Going deeper. And you're doing all of that for the Lord. So she watched, and then Pharaoh's daughter has another <laughs> individual that stepped up. So Pharaoh is the one killing children. Pharaoh is the one killing children. And the daughter of the man killing the children went against what her dad is doing. That's again another person going further. Amen. I hope you're getting this, friends. Okay. And so she saw the baby, and then she decided, to, told her maid to get the baby for her, and then they got the baby in, and then she felt sorry. She doesn't have to. She's a princess. There are so many children being killed. She saw this baby and thought, no, this is not fair. She went further. And then the young girl, no one sent her, no angel appeared to her, stepped up and said, should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Remember I said, going deeper is means asking more questions than others. Oh yeah, in this class, um, teacher doesn't like us asking questions. No, 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 don't blend in like everybody else. If you need to ask questions, ask questions. Sorry, I, what's going on here? I want to understand. Praise God. Step out of that bondage that the world is trying to put you or you are putting yourself. Be different. Amen. Be different. So the girl just stepped up and said, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, how can I help? Do you want someone to help you with this baby? And then, of course, the woman said, yes, you go ahead. Um, find me a woman that can nurse her, a Hebrew woman, and this is brilliant. And the smart young girl, <laughs> the smart young girl went and got who? The baby's mom went and got the same woman who has already lost, almost lost hope. But the smart girl stepped up and became an influencer again. And then the prince, princess gave the baby to them and said, nurse the baby. Well, take note of this. I will do what? I'll pay you. 
So the woman ended up being paid, not only the, to save your, the life of your child, no, the life, your, the, your child was secured, but you also paid for it. Why? Because you decided to be different. You decided to be different. So she got paid, and later, verse 10, probably we're going we're gonna to stop here, not probably. If when the boy was older, his mom, Pharaoh's wife, the princess doesn't know because if she knew, she wouldn't have agreed to this deal. <laughs> his mom brought the baby back to them and then they adopted him as their, it's not baby, sorry. He's now grown, by the way. We don't know what age, but he's grown. They brought him back and they adopted him as their son, as her son. Amen. Praise God. I hope this just gives you an idea of where we are going on this going deeper. We haven't even gone to Moses yet. Next week we'll continue on Moses. But just look at three women that asked more questions. Say, but why are, are they killing? Why is this things here? Why not this way? Why not that? Ask those questions. Don't be talking and saying, no, I don't want anyone to... No, break out from that. Amen. Break out from that. Everything we do, do it with humility, do it with gentleness, do it with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but don't be put into a cage. Praise God. I hope you, got, you get this, yeah? Don't be put into the, a cage. That's what God is leading all of us into. All these young people, God wants you to be a light. Break out. Ask more questions. In conclusion, go deeper. Don't be like everyone else. It's okay to be different. Can I say that again? It's okay to be what? Different. I have a weird issue. If any style of dressing or clothing becomes popular, I don't like it all of a sudden. I've always had that problem. Just to just be different. If everyone needs to be cut their hair this way, I'm going that way. The idea that I'm going to be forced into a mode actually hurts me more. Just the idea I'm forced into a mode that is not what God wants of me. Now, am I saying we cannot learn from each other? We should. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Jesus. But the point is, you're looking more like Jesus. You're trying to be like Jesus. That's the only one that has enough variety and enough dynamic for all of us to fit in and still be individuals and be unique. Is that good? Amen. Final story. One of the areas where sometimes we find ourselves forced into a mode. It's actually in an area where we should not even be forced into a mode. In worship. And I'm talking about physical worship. The literal coming into his presence. As long as you understand the word of God, the Bible says lift up your hands. The Bible says kneel down and worship him. The Bible says fall down and worship him. The Bible says stand up and worship him. The Bible says dance and worship him. There's lots of ways. You, cannot be, you should not be forced into any mode as long as you're doing all of those things. Amen. I remember joining at a church. And uh, when we joined this church, my goodness, it felt like the most important, most everyone worshiping had their hand, not everyone, but you know, it felt that way. Felt like most people, this is how they worship. Christ is my firm foundation. And then you come, you come into that place, you feel like, oh my goodness, maybe lifting up my hands might be something, maybe I shouldn't. Oh, I, I go against such a thing straight away. But before you know it, you become an influencer. And all of a sudden, the people around you, well, everyone does start lifting up their hands as well. Amen. Everyone start lifting up their hands. I went to one church, Indian church, the presence of God was there, but you could barely hear anyone's voice. 
So you could understand the pressure for someone like me who's that loud to be in such a meeting. Oh, but no, no, no. This time is me and God. Don't be forced into a mode that this is how worshipers should be. You come into a church and everyone is so quiet. You don't have to worship that way. Just worship your own way. Do you understand what I'm saying, friends? And the point here is that God is seeking for such people and he uses them for his glory. Let's stand up and pray.